Hello, I'm I'm one of the psychiatrists in here. Uh, no. I've been dealing with the media lately. I know you're her father. Can you tell me what your name is? You can call me Brown, Mr. Brown, no problem. How are you doing, Mr. Brown? I'm fine, but I'm very worried about Amelia. I, I want to know exactly uh, what's wrong with her and how we can help. Yeah, you can tell us you're worried about her. It makes sense. Uh, can, I, can I ask, what do you know about her condition? Does anyone talk to you? Well, she, she, I thought that she wanted to do some sort of, you know, diet, and she wants to lose weight, as all of the girls do. But... It seems that she lost too much weight. We went to the GP, he said, no, this is not a simple diet. She needs to yeah. be seen by a psychiatrist. Yeah, that is true. That is true. So basically, uh, so have you heard about anorexia nervosa before? No, what is anorexia nervosa? Okay, so it's basically a problem psychologically in which um, the media has been uh, her, her body weight has been low and her BMI has been low, lower than the normal, uh, because she is uh, intentionally trying to decrease her weight. Uh, uh, well, I, I didn't get what do you mean by BMI. Okay, so basically it means that her weight for her, for her height has been low, and we yeah. worry about that. I see. We I see. Uh, and what I can you... Been... Yes? What? Yeah. I, I know she's been restricting her food and she's not been eating well. Yeah, so, and what can be the reason for this anorexia, doctor? Okay, so there are multiple factors that could cause this. Uh, one of them will be genetic, because I know she has a family history of this with her sister. Yeah. Okay, doctor, so, um, yeah. What, what are other well, I'm wondering, doctor, so how can we help her? Okay, so let's just see her problem in a nutshell so we can best help her. Her problem right now is that she has anorexia nervosa, and this has, uh, you know, made some physical problems with her, in which she's not getting her period. Uh, we we want to do more blood tests and investigations to check on her physical health to make sure that her kidneys and heart uh, and liver is okay. When we, when we do those tests, you know, we will know more about her risk and if she needs to be admitted or not. But uh, currently, so far with her vitals, it seems like she is uh, she's okay. She doesn't need to be admitted. She also has some uh, problems with her personality already because she is a perfectionist, as you know. Uh, and she needs to control things. Um, there are other problems in which, you know, I've heard from her that uh, maybe there are family problems, uh, there may be stressors with you guys. I so see. those are all things that you need to keep in mind uh, when helping her out. I see. So do, do you think that she might get better? You know, uh, a, a lot of people, when, when they get anorexia and they get 3 to 50%, can return to their baseline and return to normal. Okay. How can I help her? Okay, so there's a lot that we can do. One of uh, the things that we want to start with in here uh, is uh, talking to her more. I would love to talk to her more about uh, what she thinks about her anorexia, what she thinks about her treatment plan, um, if she does, she has any concern so I can motivate her to get into the treatment. It's very important for her to be motivated and seen with us. But we'll also need uh, to use a dietitian with us so we can increase her weight slowly. Uh, are you with me so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and what, what yeah. can be the complications, doctor, of this problem? Yeah. Uh, so this can cause a problem. That's why we need a dietitian. So basically right now, since uh, your daughter has been starving herself, she has been, uh, there are some electrolyte imbalances. So the, she has low food taste in her body. And now when we get her back into eating, we get, she's going to need that phosphate, but there isn't, there isn't any in her body. So this can lead to arrhythmias in her heart, and this can even lead to that. I see. So I see. we're very careful with that. We can be very careful with that. Uh, 
do you have any other questions so far? No, thank you. Okay. So something else that we would like to do is do more investigations, make sure her, her heart is okay, do some heart tracing, make sure his, her liver is okay, her kidneys are okay, and her electrolytes are okay. Okay. Finished? No. So, uh, do you have any other question for me? No, thank you. No, thank you. Something that we would like to do later on is to, to monitor her closely. So she needs to come to us and so we can check if she has any other comorbid psychiatric disorders that need her uh, need our assistance. Uh, there is also some talking therapy that can help her out. If you, have you ever heard about talking therapy before? What type of talk therapy? So there are multiple types that can help her out. One of them is a CBT, it's cognitive behavioral therapy. Have you heard about that before? No. Okay, so it's basically, we're gonna work on her cognitions, her thoughts uh, regarding how she sees herself, her weight, and we're gonna deal with- One minute remaining. And we're also gonna deal with her behavior. I see, I see. Do you have any other questions so far? No, no, thank you. Okay, so something I know that you said that you wanna support your daughter during this time, and you were asking me what we can do to help her out. Yeah, I would so like to know how can I help. Yeah, so one of the very important things that we need right now is uh, to do some maybe family therapy session. So we can help you all uh, cope with this and uh, see if there are any problems that we can deal with. Is that okay? Okay, thank you so much. Finished? Do you have any questions? Okay. How do you feel about what you did? And I hope that I get the feedback from our colleagues in the chat section. You give me your own feedback about what you did and tell me what were the areas of difficulties which you found in this stage. Uh, I think maybe the organization was a problem for me here. Yes. Oh, I felt like I was not organized. Uh, uh, I think I formulated the problem well. Uh, okay. I've said the, the management plan with the bicycle approach. Uh, and I've talked about the investigations that need to be done. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, well, I'll give you, sometimes your head movement, hand movement was too much. You use a lot of jargon mm -hmm. like BMI. Yeah the uh, comorbid and genetics, all these are uh, our jargon. Um, I think you, we will see how to do a formulation instead of explaining now what, how to do a formulation. When I ask you, is she going to get better? You must know what are the prognostic factors in general of the psychiatric disorders and in particular for the, uh, for this, uh, for anorexia nervosa. When I asked you, how can I help her? He did not address my question at all. And instead you said that you are going to talk with her. I said, how can I help? This is a common question in which you are going to get whenever you are going to have a family member talking with you about his son or his daughter or et cetera. Uh, complications, when I ask you about the complications, the complications are too much in the in this uh, station. This lady might, will have a uh, anemia. She will have brittle bones. She might have infertility. Okay, so all all her body is going to be uh, weakened. Her skin uh, is going to be uh, also weak, and she's going to have hair loss. Everything is going to be affected physically, just to the extent that there is fatalities from this disorder. So uh, I think in the area of complications, we're a bit uh, defective. Okay, so let's see the feedback of our colleagues. Okay, so um, jargon, uh, risk assessment, she did not do BMI, electrolyte imbalance, arrhythmias, all these are jargons. So our colleagues are saying that you kept talking about jargons. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to the feedback for our colleagues. They are all psychiatrists, definitely they are clever. And the level is not far from the examiner. So pay attention to their feedback. Let's see, according to our slides. Now, I hope that you give me a formulation, please. Try to formulate. This is our template. So 
what is the main psychological problem and what is the level of risk? And uh, the next second line is the background and the according to the biopsychosocial information machine. Do you want me to say the familiar name? Yeah, please formulate. Okay, so she has anorexia nervosa. Uh, this has affected her uh, her weight and her weight is- No, 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 no. Just anorexia nervosa, only the psychological problem and what is the level okay. of risk which you find now in this patient. Okay, there is no level, uh, no risk right now, but we need to do more investigation. How did you know? How, 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 how did you know? Uh, because her- because her BMI is uh, not lower than 13. And, what, what if and she expressed those of harming herself or suicidal thoughts to her father? Did you ask him? Mm. Did you ask him? He did not ask. No, he did not show no, that you were concerned. So this is the one, I think this is a fatal mistake. So you, you, you solely depended upon the risk according to the uh, knowledge about the anorexia nervosa and not about the clinical case which you had. Okay, so the main psychological problem is, and the risk, now this lady is having anorexia nervosa. Uh, there is a low risk, but still there is a big potential that she can be uh, in a need for further or intensive care. That's why she might need to be admitted. All this in the background. What do you know about her biopsychosocial information? She has some family problem. How did you know? It's Oh, okay. Because of the previous station. No. How did you know? How did you know? You should have asked okay. him. So give me information. So I have to ask. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We will see how that the sequence of our approach will help you to have enough information so that whenever you reach the step of formulation, you will be able to cover this uh, formulation without any problem. Okay. 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 So the, our approach plan, your introduction was good. Unfortunately, you do not gather inf any information. Yes, in the beginning, I asked you, what is anorexia? And you should, have got, you should go with the flow. You should go with what my concerns because the station's name is address concerns and management. So we do not ignore what I'm saying, but still you should be able to go back to your agenda once you have addressed my, uh, my concerns. How can you do this? After addressing my concerns, explaining what is anorexia nervosa, and what are the etiology behind this or what are the reasons? Just say him, I would like to know more information about her condition because this will help us to take the right clinical decision and then gather the relevant information. Ask him if she has ever had any physical problems before in contact with psychiatric services, if she has any stresses around her and support and particularly in this station and how the family is doing with her and the level of risk according to your assessment, you should ask her about, ask him about the uh, uh, thoughts of harming herself or any uh, previous harm methods. Okay, and then you should do your formulation and then set the management plan, okay? And because I know that there are many points in the management plan in any case, many points. That's why we have one, two, three, four points, step approach, this is my way which helped me and helped many candidates not to forget what to do when you are talking about the management. The first thing which you should do is that I'm going to talk with Amelia myself. I'm going to explain for her her diagnosis and the management, which we are going to do. I'm also going to do thorough risk assessment and also physical assessment. It's very important, not only to show that you are a practitioner who is um, you know, who is assertive, he's doing his, the things by himself, not triaging the patient here and there. But there is a point which is particular for those who are keen to have a collaborative approach in the, uh, with their patient or in the mark sheet. So you are saying this to score for yourself that a, a particular point in the mark sheet. Everything in the slides is related to the mark sheet. Okay, this slide is just to help you to pass. This is actually all this practice which we are doing now is focused on passing the cost. Okay, so where the patient is going to be treated according to your risk assessment, this patient uh, should be treated at home. There is no problem and she's going to be followed, but still if there are some points uh, or some uh, disorders, if, uh, if they develop 
she might be in need to be admitted in hospital like SWAT 1, 2, and 3, which I've just mentioned. Very important to mention the investigations and the multidisciplinary team. He did not say it all, I didn't hear it. A team who will cover all her needs, physically, psychologically, and socially. Physically, this lady must be in contact with the GP who is going to follow up her physical condition. Psychologically, the backbone is the talking therapy, and it can be lengthy, can need CBT, interpersonal therapy, and also cognitive analytic. Uh, socially, there are many factors which you should incorporate in the social uh, problem, particularly family education. Okay, we know that this lady is, uh, Enrix in general, is greatly affected by the family dynamics. And also if her treatment uh, pe uh, period might affect her education or job, this is something which should be addressed by the social services. Okay, anyone has any question? Do you have any question? Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Hussein. We are going to do this because there is a point in the mark sheet, as we said, in order to address the mark sheet. Okay, okay, Dr. Hussein, we are not here to discuss the logic. We are here just to make sure that we are going to pass the task. Okay, so uh, here are the prognostic factors in general for all the psychiatric disorder. But this is the prognostic factors for the anorexia nervosa and the eating disorder. We know that the ladies who uh, does not have or does have medical complication like uh, amnesia, current weight loss, all these, uh, I'm not going through because this is a particular station, but you might be asked about the prognostic factors in this station. Is she going to get better? Don't set an empty reassurance, at least mention some of these prognostic factors the prognostic factors of anorexia and nervosa. Okay. Okay, this is the mark sheet. Okay, so as you can see doctors, this is the mark sheet. And as you can see, the first point to be scored for the you doctor or, or actually it is not going to be scored. The formulation, you did not formulate effectively. You recognize the significance of findings and results and you came up that this lady is having anorexia nervosa. Unfortunately, your, your management plan was not sufficient to say that you have set a, a, an appropriate management plan. Um, you said that I'm going to talk with the patient myself. I hear Dr. Hussein why we say that I'm going to talk with the patient myself. I'm going to explain to her her illness. I might also need to do some physical examination. I also do uh, some uh, risk assessment. It is very important to say this to score this point. Okay, so pay attention to this in order to make sure that you'll pass the task, not because we are going to discuss here the logic. I've already seen the patient. Yes, you have seen the patient, but now you are going to do a management and this lady must be must understand your management okay does not develop uh, adequate risk management plan yeah uh so you told me that i'm not going to get the mark for the management plan uh what is it exactly the problem that i've made any what's the mistake what did i not say i've just said doctor you must talk about the physical you did not talk about the physical and that you are going to liaise with the gp okay very important to say this Okay, you said that you are going to do some blood. Did you talk about the investigations, the blood test? And yeah, we are I, going... I did. Yeah. Did you talk did. about? The... Okay, okay. Did you talk I about the? Uh... Okay, so well, it's up to you. I said this is my assessment. Maybe if I were examiner, I felt that it was disorganized. Maybe because it was disorganized. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and that's yeah. why it gave an impression that you are not adequate when you talk about the manager. Make sure that. You talk as one chunk in an organized way. Otherwise, the examiner will feel that you missed some parts. I do not disagree with you. I felt now, now I remember that you said uh, something, uh, things which I felt that you have missed. But because you were disorganized, I felt that you missed many things. Okay. It does not identify psychological or social interventions. You did a risk management plan. 
Um, unfortunately, he did not address the risk. He did not ask me about the risk, and he did not say that if there are some particular points in her condition, she might be in need for the admission. So 0.5 is not going to be scored. So though, Dr. Maram, you felt that you did well when it comes down to the mark sheet, as you can see, many points can be missed. It was not very organized. It was formalic because you used a lot of jargon and I felt that you were lecturing. Your attitude was good. Your listening skills were good. Your question style and language were good. Okay. Okay, I hope that you all understand this mark sheet because this is how you are going to be assessed and what you are going to do in the station must help you to score these points please don't let your logic and philosophy um no we, we already seen the patient i'm not going to say that i'm going to talk with the patient again and eventually we we'll lose this point point number four please don't do this we want to pass this in the cask we want to pass this mark sheet we want to pass the station okay Thank you so much, Dr. Mara. Very clever. Okay. Uh, can I ask you another question? Uh, when the father asked me, how can I help uh, my daughter? I'm supposed to just answer, uh, you need to be with the family therapy or what else can I say? Okay. Um, very simple question. This is a communication skill uh, question. Okay, how can I help her? I really appreciate that you are keen to help her. Your omission support is very important. Also, your feedback to the team will help us to take the right clinical decision. But I'll give you leaflets about how to help your Amelia in the best way. Simple answer, as you can see, this is your ability to do communication skill in a better way. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, who would like to go next? I guess uh, there is Dr. Laila, who said that she's going to... Uh, Hello, doctor. I want to go next. Uh, Dr. Layla, yes, one minute. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Layla. How are you? So, what is your station, Dr. Layla? Uh, it's a chronic schizophrenia, station 23. Chronic schizophrenia. Station what? Uh, 23. Yes, one minute. <sighs> So it's about this man who is the whose son is calling him in the middle of the night. Uh, yes, kind of. Yes, yes, yeah. This man, who, yeah, okay. Again, doctor, you will always have in your station a scenario which challenge your communication skills. Always, okay. always, always. So don't think that's about uh, talking about your knowledge. So in this station, you will meet a very frustrated father who is not happy with the management of his son. And also he's not happy that his son is annoying him in the middle of the night by phone calls. And he is an old man. Okay, so you must address this in your, uh, your, um, in, in your discussion with him. And this man might need uh, something called community treatment order. Maybe it's something for the IMG, which they don't know. If the uh, patient is not uh, compliant with the medication, we don't wait for him until he relapses immediately. He's going to be admitted automatically. This is a community treatment order. And also there is definitely a place for the depot medications, okay? so. Uh, I think this addresses your question whether he's going to take the medications and so on or, or not. Okay. Uh, in this station, also don't forget that this boy or this man is in need for admission under the Mental Health Act. It's very important to say this. And also in need for assessment from the alcohol and substance misuse team uh, to see the extent of his alcohol problem and whether he, is, he needs he is taking any other substance. And when you talk about the investigation, or also you must talk about the urine drug screening. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to take more one minute just to arrange your thoughts and write down your notes or are you are ready? Um, I need to write about community treatment order. Okay. I didn't know about it. Okay, take two minutes just to arrange your thoughts. And is the can you say it again community what order community treatment, treatment or community treatment i think the, our colleagues who work in the uk 
uh, have better knowledge actually about the details of this community treatment order. If they can write some of the details here, or you can Google it, no problem. Just call community treatment order. Okay, let's start it. We will learn through the station. Okay. Okay, let's start. Let's say that my name is what? Uh, according to this, uh, Mr. I am Mr. Brown, and let's say that my son is my son's name is Michael. Okay, one, two, three, go. Hello, I'm Dr. Mashad, one of the psychiatrists from Mental Health Unit. Hello. So, Mr. James, hello. I'm here to talk about uh, Michael because he filed a complaint about him, and I'm here. Actually, to I, I'm not happy, doctor. I'm not happy. I, I, I'm so frustrated because of what is Michael doing and also frustrated from the service which he is having from your side. He, he is not improving and now he is annoying me. I'm, I'm, I'm an old man. I cannot tolerate what he is doing. I can see you're quite frustrated and I'm here to address your concerns. But I need to know a bit about your son, that how he is doing. Okay, no problem. Okay, can you tell me uh, what his condition is nowadays? Well, actually, he 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 left my house maybe uh, three weeks ago. I don't know where he is, and he keeps now calling me in the middle of the night several times, shouting and talking about things which I don't know about, and mm -hmm. and even worse, he sounds as if he's drunk, something like this, and and the nurse come to my house asking me about him. And I say to her, I don't know. Uh, actually, I don't know where he is. And and has been going on like this for um, two weeks or three weeks now. Uh, the nurse come uh, in order to give him his medication. He is out of the house. He doesn't take the medication and he keeps annoying me. Oh, that's quite a frustrating situation. And does he express any ideas of harming himself? No, but he keeps threatening me, doctor. Oh. So he is expressing ideas of harming you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So according to my understanding, your son has a schizophrenia and uh, now he's relapsing because he's not taking his medication and he's taking drugs as well. And he is at risk of harming other people. Well, th this is right, doctor. And actually last time he was supposed to be admitted in the hospital, but he left. And, and, and you did not keep him. Uh, though, though you, are, you yeah. said that you are going to give him a new medication called Libonex, something like this. Mm -hmm. But eventually he did not take it and he left the hospital. Okay, do you want me to uh, address this concern for you? Yes, doctor, I don't want, I don't want this to be repeated. Mm -hmm. So what happened in the last time that when he was admitted, it was a voluntary admission. And even though we wanted to give him these alternative medication, he refused it. And as he was not under the Mental Health Act, we couldn't uh, do anything about him giving these medications. And he got better with the old one. That's why he was discharged. I see, Did I see. So, so, might so this, this might happen again, doctor. This will mm -hmm. be repeated, doctor, now. So that's why we are considering uh, either to give him uh, another medication called depot medication or keep him under community treatment um, order that will uh, keep him uh, from doing so. Okay, but he's not at home now. How, how can you sort this out? Mm -hmm. uh, I understand your concern and this is quite a difficult situation, but uh, whenever he comes home, we will uh, apply uh, as he is not doing very well. We will keep uh, him under uh, uh, mental health act. Uh, we will apply a mental health act on him, and we will uh, bring but, him. But to the he hospital. will not. He, he will not come home. I'm sure because he knows if he comes home, he, he will be taken by your service. So what, what are you mm -hmm. going to do? Uh, he knows mm -hmm. that when he comes home, I'm going to inform the services. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to do. But uh, someone, but do you know where he is? No. Mm -hmm. uh, we can still invoke Mental Health Act in here, and they, these people will find him and bring him to the hospital. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, doctor. So what will happen then after going to the hospital? Okay, in the hospital first, I would like to meet him 
um, I would like to look into him, uh, see how his mental health is, and we'll see him physically. I would like to um, see how he's doing. I would like to do certain investigation to see his physical test, like um, complete blood count, um, check his liver, do his um, heart racing to see if he can take these new invest uh, to see if he's doing physically well and take new medications. I will also try to do um, the urine toxicology to check for his uh, drug stress status. Am I making sense to you? Yes, yes, yes. No. Yes, Should indeed. I go on? Yeah, 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 no problem. Mm -hmm. In the hospital, he will be admitted under Mental Health Act, and uh, we will like to start him on the medication. Well, he, he will not take the medications, doctor, I'm sure. No. But as he is um, under Mental Health Act, we will try to give him the medication. I see, I see. We can also give him a depot medication which is in the form of an injection, and he will not to, uh, have to take him regularly. I see you, doctor. Mm -hmm. There is an option of another medication uh, which is given to the patient uh, who do not respond to other medication. This medication is called clozapine. But doctor, I know my son, he's not cooperative. He might get agitated in the hospital. Mm -hmm. In the hospital, we have um, teams available that can, you know, calm him down and give, we will give him these medications that will make him relax and in the, uh, then he will listen to us. One minute for many. Mm -hmm. and we will also like to involve multidisciplinary team and uh, we will like to treat your son on, uh, through psychologist and involve talk therapy like cognitive behavioral therapy, and we will like to involve the drug rehabilitation services as well, um, so that he get uh, treated uh, there. Okay. Mm -hmm. But and, what, what will happen, doctor, when he is discharged? Uh, in this, uh, during discharge, we will like uh, that community nurse keep up with him, and we will keep him under CTO so that uh, the condition like that do not arise again. What is the CTO? CTO is a community treatment order in which um, uh, we keep the patient in contact with the system and he come and get treated for his condition. Okay, very and good. He do not uh, get time, 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 time. How do you feel about what you did? How do you feel about what you did? <laughs> I struggled because I didn't know few, uh, like I didn't know what to do when he was like out of the home and how to bring home him home. Like, okay, so mm -hmm. uh, very good. Doctor Mahmoud is giving us a very good feedback. We need to treat in order a mental health act. Well, the reason of the relapse, it's obvious that this patient, yes, we should have said that this patient is not taking the medications. He also might be under the effect of drugs and alcohol. And after discharge, the uh, care must be by a team uh, to make sure that he's going to be covered, particularly visits by uh, CPN. Great job. Yes, formulation. So how do you feel about, well, let's go to the mark sheet. Okay, so give me a formulation, please. And I hope that everyone also help us and what about so everyone? My formulation right? was that um, your son is suffering from schizophrenia on the background of he's not taking his medications regularly. Yes, I, I've um, noticed that you, you have formulated, you did formulate, but please mm -hmm. do not formulate before gathering enough information because sometimes okay. they change the scenario. Okay. Don't go through this station or the stations in the casket. 100% uh, sure that they are typical scenarios like what we are doing now. So they can, couldn't put anything in the area of, maybe there has been some stressors in his life, something died in his, his mother, died, his, he lost his dog, you don't know. Okay, he might have physical problems, you don't know. So you must make sure that you cover the important points in your discussion with the man, with his father before going through the uh, formulation. When I say the important points, I mean the biopsychosocial areas and the risk, okay? Very important because this will help you to formulate the problem, okay? And without any mistakes. 
and we did a very good job, but the problem is that you were a bit uh, in rush in doing your formulation. Okay. okay, so your introduction was good. Um, you did not gather enough information in the beginning. I hope that you would have gathered information just a bit more. Um, you explained the diagnosis, just uh, we're here, the diagnosis. You know that this man is in relapse and he's also in, under the effect of the drug and so on. There is no diagnosis actually here to explain. Sometimes in the stations, you don't need to explain the diagnosis, just it is an established diagnosis. All what you need is to do a formulation and, and focus on the management plan. Now, what you are going to do, you talked about it, where the patient is going to be treated, you mentioned. You said the investigations and something good that you said the investigations in details, actually. You're just not, not saying the blood investigations in general, so going to do blood tests uh, related to the liver functions, kidney function, et cetera, and urine drug uh, screening. But I wish that you would, would have said that there'll be a multidisciplinary team. You, you must say that we, we might need to assess his physical condition because of the drug. I hope that you would have said this. Uh, yes, this man is, uh, is psychotic and the best uh, medications for him is an antipsychotic. Uh, prefer a little bit depot, but still the uh, psychotic patients also benefit from the talking therapy to uh, shake up their delusions and improve their uh, way of thinking. Please don't forget this. When you talk about the uh, social, don't forget the community treatment order and also the uh, the non pharmacal uh, the uh, using the alcohol and substance misuse and the freak the uh, community treatment nurse okay let us see the mark sheet okay well, I have to be honest with you, the management points, I think you are going to score in, in, in them in a good way. So you did formulate, you recognize significance of finding the result. Your management plan was not bad, actually. I think it deserves to be scored. Um, well, you said that I'm going to talk with him. He said, that's good. Risk management plan, you did talk about the risk and addressed it. The psychological, you did not uh, mention, but you mentioned the social. So this point might or might not be scored for you. But the only thing which I like, be aware of, because I feel that you are so tense and this is a, it, it reflect, is this reflected in your face. So you might be uh, lose the uh, point of uh, does not show appropriate attitude or behavior. Okay, okay. so I felt that it's so tense and I feel that you are struggling and it's appeared in your face. It's, it, it does not go smooth. Uh, it was not very formalic, it was organized, your listening skill was good, and your question style was good, and language was good. But again, uh, the, the issue of, of the communication is highly subjective. So though, okay. from my perspective, you only lose one point, but it is left for the exam that you might feel that what you did was, or, or your attitude is so uh, bad that you might lose maybe three points in the communication. I don't want this. So just uh, try to make it easier and pay attention to how you look in the screen. The problem is that maybe if I'm in uh, live uh, personally with you, one for one to one face, I will not feel that this is something uh, big, but the, the online uh, interviewing makes your facial expression, uh, well, you, it multiplies its impact maybe 10 times. So pay attention to your facial expressions. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Can I ask so, a question? Please, if anyone has any question, write it down in the chat section. Please, okay. Okay, the only one who can talk is the one who is supposed to do the station. Then anyone who wants to do ask any questions, write it in this what chat section and I will address it. How do you answer the question? Uh, if, he, if he refuses the medications in the hospital, uh, well, he should have shared. Well, thank you, doctor, uh, for this question. Well, if he is not cooperative, we can give him benzodiazepines. This will calm him down and will make him more cooperative. And we'll talk with him to help him to understand more about the need for this medication. Thank you for this question, doctor. Very clever. 
whenever you are faced with this question, the two ways which will help uh, you to, uh, to break the resistance of the patient is by the medications and by the token therapy. Uh, uh, what Mike, should be? Uh, yeah. My question is the same as that of Madam, that what, what should be the answer of that street thing? How to bring yes, we, well, just by the Mental Health Act, because this okay. is their job. We don't say that we are going to, when you inform the Mental Health Act, the job is to find him. I don't know how, and that's it. This is their job. Okay? We don't wait until he comes back home, and the man called the, uh, the Mental Health Act, and they come, and they might find him or not. So just say that it is the job of the Mental Health Act. I think they communicate with the police, something like this. So it's not our job. Okay, thank you, Sir Sumaira. I think she says the police also is involved in this to find the patient. Okay, so uh, who would like to go next? I, we did two stations up to now. Can, I can go ahead, Dr. Husham. Uh, Okay, Dr. Malik, one minute. Okay, Dr. So, Malik, sorry, Malik. Sorry. I, I did some, I added someone else. Okay, Dr. Malik, what is your station? Uh, my station is uh, delirium tremens. Yes, delirium tremens. Hi, doctor. How is everything? Hi. So, uh, uh, well, again, doctor, you know that delirium tremors is a part, mainly a medical issue, though the patient is presenting with a devastating and severe psychotic and hallucinations and so on. But in this station, um, well, so it is basically a medical problem. But again, as I always say, the scenario incorporates a challenge to your communication skills. So. In this station, you're going to face a nurse who's not happy with this patient. He is stressing on you to take him to the uh, psychiatric side. And, uh, and, and you should try to address, and he will talk about how much he's stressed in his ward. And, and this is a skill to address his uh, concerns and also to show empathy and to explain to him that you do his, your best to to make sure that the presence of the patient in his side is going to be suitable, okay? Ready? Or you want some time to arrange your thoughts and write down your notes? Uh, I think fine, so we can start. Okay. Okay, so how to go to do, okay. So we'll start now one, two, three, go. Hi, my name is Dr. Hayat, and I'm one of the doctors from Mental Health Team. Uh, am I speaking to Ms. You, you can call me, Robin, and I really appreciate that you came, doctor, to uh, discuss with us the case of Mr. White, because I think he is totally now your patient. He is out of control because mm. of some underlying medical, mental problem. We did our mm -hmm. job in the orthopedic board, and I think you should take him to your side to help him. Mm -hmm. Robin, thanks a lot, you know, for filling me in. Um, so uh, I'm here to, you know, discuss the diagnosis and the treatment, you know, what we are going to do with uh, Mr. White. But before going into that, uh, could you tell me a bit more? I mean, what were the circumstances that led to the admission mean and how well, he's he, he has board? been admitted three days ago. They said that he was hmm. coming out of the pub and he fell. We, we, this is a typical story and he had a fracture in his uh, femur. We did for <laughs> him an operation and uh, maybe yesterday he started to hallucinate talking about things which are not there and he is in a military facility and that we mm. are some military personnel and he's kidnapped, you know, he's not cooperative uh, and he's shaky. So I think that these are not uh, things which we are, can deal with, doctor. I have a very busy word with orthopedic and traumatic patients. So I don't think that there is a place for such reasons in our side. Robin, thanks a lot. You know, you, you have given me a very useful information and I can understand from where you are coming, you know, that you are very occupied with, you know, the uh, bedding situation. 
but you know what what happened that i spoke to mr white as well and whatever you were telling me that you know he is seeing things when when nobody is around he's talking about you know the military police and at the same time he is shaking and trembling uh, so what what i have perceived that he is uh, having a very severe you know kind of medical condition we call it as delirium tremens have, have you heard about it before uh, robin now what is delirium tremens so delirium tremens uh, is that you know if someone is drinking for a long period of time and then they suddenly stop drinking my understanding is that his his last drink was before coming to the hospital about 3 days ago and he was drinking alcohol for a long period of time and you know what happens in these people if they suddenly stop drinking they become confused they become agitated and then they start seeing things like you know when there is no one around we call it as you know the visual hallucination well, sometimes well, 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 i totally I, i don't want to interrupt you and i totally agree actually it seems it is like uh, very closely to the condition of mr web but this means that he is should be in your sign it is a totally psychological problem no? I, i i i really appreciate robin but this is a medical emergency because uh, because it what happened that it it presented in a like in a very short period of time I mean uh, we will keep that thing in the mind but at the moment it's a medical emergency and it need to be treated on medical board because if we are not going to treat it uh, it it is associated with a uh, large number of you know the mortality or the deaths it could be 30 to 40% I uh, see, doctor. But doctor, so how can we help him, doctor? You know, we are not specialized with this type of patients. Is not. I, I, I really, oh. I really appreciate, uh, uh, Robin. So, so first thing is first. So you know what we have discussed that he is suffering from you know the delirium tremors because of you know uh, drinking large amount of alcohol and then he stopped it suddenly. Um, so it's a medical emergency. We are going to treat it on medical ward. Uh, we usually you know he should be nursed in a quiet room well lit room so that we are going to you know help him with the familiar nursing staff they can reorient him you know uh, time to time um, are are you with me so far robert yes 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 have you got any question for me no 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 i just want to okay. know about okay. how to so so what is going to happen next is that we need to uh, check his you know the uh, blood levels especially you know the serum electrolytes uh, which which could which could be abnormal so we need to replace them and uh, he, these people are usually dehydrated so we need to you know rehydrate them uh, at the same time the the most important treatment in such situation is uh, benzodiazepine so we can you know put him on um, benzodiazepine which is called as chlorpyrifoxide so we can arrange that you know uh, uh, prescription wise so we will put him on a sliding scale so that will be reduced over a period of time depending on the severity of the symptoms oh, oh, well doctor the problem that he is not very cooperative doctor and he wants to go out um, yeah i mean uh, in that case definitely you know we need to you know uh, apply a kind of less restrictive method you know we can speak to him i will also speak to him and i'll also explain you know this diagnosis and uh, uh, if you know he's not happy and he don't want to stay in the hospital that in that case we can you know look at his capacity you know to 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 decide about his stay in the hospital and then we can uh, you know act in the best interest of the patient i see i see doctor so but, but sometimes he gets agitated so you know i am coming towards you know the this point so you know the benzodiazepines is going to help him with you know the his withdrawal symptom and the agitation but in these patient it is very important to uh, give them you know the multivitamins in the form of you know the iv injections initially uh, that include thiamine uh or one like minute remaining next, one minute remaining uh, like in next 2 to 3 days and yeah. then we can replace it with the oral thiamine now this is the immediate treatment but at the same time we need to look at you know the long term treatment in the form of like linking him with drug and alcohol services and we can you know provide him some support in the form of you know the talking therapy and uh, later on you know we can uh, provide him more support around you know the you know the education about you know the his problem and uh, uh, you know the symptoms uh, if he is going to have in uh, in future is is that okay with you rob okay yes yes definitely 
and uh, I will I will also give him you know some uh, you know uh, you know the written information once he is stable we will link him with them as well we, we can review him over a period of time we can support him and we can also uh, you know signpost him to uh, alcoholic anonymous or uh, twelve step program as well in the future. Time time how do you feel about Thanks. that? It was very good by the way. How do you feel about what you did? Uh, I think I was not able to, uh, what you call it, as conclude it properly. Uh, okay. So it was, your communication was very good, very, very good. But I hope in the always in the beginning, you must ask about the level of risk. If there is any risk or yep. posing to himself or anyone else. We you already know that this made a patient is medically stable. So as I say, always say in the beginning, try to cover the areas which will help you to formulate. So you know that this patient is already medically stable accordingly, he did an operation. However, the, you need to know more about his, uh, the level of risk, if there is any post psychiatric history and if any social support around him, because this will help you to formulate as we said, and then later on will help you to set an appropriate management plan. You. Um, you, you jump to the delirium tremors doctor without asking either one question about any post hit sleep alcohol. So it seemed that as if you know the scenario. So you just talked to me about the patient and then jumped to the conclusion that this is an alcoholic patient only because I said that he is shaking. Don't do this, please. Don't do this. In the beginning, try to take some information to know the past history because this talking in the beginning is not a waste of time. It will show that you have a collaborative approach and also will not show that you know the, you know the station and you have, that you, you have your own agenda. And also will, will, make, will make what you are saying is logic because oh, I said that this man is not cooperative and shaking. He said that this man is having delirium tremens and so on. But definitely this is not okay. When I said that, I said that this man is uh, agitated, I expected from him to talk about the possibility of giving him lorazepam to calm him down in addition to the clodazepoxide. The clodazepoxide is to treat a long-term treatment, long-term, uh, long-acting uh, benzodiazepine. Is not, it is not for the agitation, okay? And if you have an alcoholic patient, it does not uh, correct much of the agitation. Uh, it, it just helped him to avoid the, uh, the complications of the acute withdrawal. And instead of saying this, you said that you talked about the multivitamin, uh, always mentioned that there is a need for him to have a nursing staff who is specialized in dealing with such patients. Please put it in your management plan. But this man, you are going to send for, the, uh, for them a nurse who is specialized in dealing with such patients to make sure that he will get the appropriate service and that you will come to uh, assess him frequently and you will give them your phone number in order to uh, have a, to contact you at any time. So this is a very okay. important, okay? Right. Let us have the feedback of our colleagues and then I hope also that you pay attention to it. Uh, doctor, he could have asked the nurse about the patient when he came. Okay, here yeah, he did excellent. But if addiction, so yes, he should. They said that he should have uh, referred the patient to the addiction uh, service, yeah, and motivational viewing. How was the patient? Lord, does it look like sliding scale? Yes, and, and one uh, important thing is that these patients have a particular way of taking care of them, uh, ideally speaking, yeah, that there is sewer, okay. See you, okay. Yeah, you know the see you, okay. Okay, so let's see our mark, our slides. Let's see, okay. So your introduction was good. And actually, you know, your communication skill is very good, very professional. I like it. Have you ever been to the CASC before, Dr. Malik? Uh, uh, Dr. Sam, I uh, basically I passed my percentage by failed with uh, three stations. So I managed to pass nine stations. Okay, so. It seemed that you are experienced. So the only thing which I hope that you pay attention to that you in the beginning try to gather information and show that you have collaborative approach. Uh, when I said that I have a problem because of him, tell me more about the problems which Mr. White is causing in your place. Uh, definitely, I will do my best to help you and make 
the management of Mr. Uh, White is as smooth as uh, possible. Let's show some words of empathy and gather the relevant information. Doctor, again, check the risk. Very important, Dr. Malik. This is a terrible mistake if you did not talk about the risk or show that you, the risk is one of your concerns. You did not talk about it at all. Any thoughts of harming himself? Any thoughts of harming someone else? Did he do anything to help other patients? I didn't hear it from him at all. Pay attention to this doctor, particularly that this man is confused. You explain the diagnosis, as I said, and the formulation. So please formulate the doctor according to our template, the situation and the background. Go ahead, please. Uh, Dr. Sam, I'm, I'm on the road, sorry, I was, I stopped. Okay, to, you okay, know, so let us, let us continue. Okay, okay, no problem. So let's say the formulation that this man is having uh, delirium tremens, which is considered to be a medical emergency. And there is risk because of this medical problem on himself and on the others because of the patient's mental state. Uh, all this on the background that his medical condition, according uh, to the investigations, were uh, allowed him to have a surgery, but now he's having this uh, medical emergency. We need to know more about his psychological past history and also the level of social support he is having outside and his social life. Okay, all this because everything I said in the formulation, you sh it should be reflected in your management plan. Okay, so let's see how we talk about the management plan. What are you going to do, Dr. Malik? This is something which you should do. I'm going to assess the patient frequently. I will try to assess his mental state and also do a thorough risk assessment. There is no place here to talk about the explaining of the management to the patient, just to make sure that you are in contact with the patient and making the plan go as you want. Where the patient is going to be treated, you mentioned that he's going to be treated in the medical ward and the investigations. You must talk about the investigations because we know that there are some investigations are related to the uh, liver functions, which is something, just say that I'm going to have a look at the investigation. Definitely, he did the investigation because he had been in, so yeah, he did the surgery maybe uh, two days ago. Then talk about the multidisciplinary team. As we said, there will be, this is a physical problem. So you must liaise with the GP or the physician to make sure that he is going to be assessed by the physician. It is a medical emergency, as I said. Psychologically, there are two things which you should pay attention to. The benzodiazepine, the fire means, the uh, lorazepam as an emergency medications, the nursing staff who's going to take care of him, and also uh, the uh, CIWA, which should be in the physical part. But this patient should be followed uh, uh, according to the uh, CIWA uh, schedule. Socially, okay, when he, this is the long term, you should be in contact with the alcohol and substance misuse services. Also, you want to know more about his social life and the stresses which he might be having. And if there is any need for the support of the social services, this is something to be assessed by the social service. Okay, this is how you talk about the management plan. Let's have a look at our mark sheet rapidly. And I'm again, I'm repeating the mark sheet because eventually everything comes down to the mark sheet. So it does not formulate the problem effectively. Um, I don't know, did you formulate it? Did, did you formulate, doctor? I summarized that, you know, what are the... No, no, formulation, that doctor, is. formulation is not, is not for summary. Formulation, as we said, formulation is different from the sum. So you did not formulate. You recognize the significance of aspects and result. Your management plan was good, though it could have been better, but this point is going to be scored for you. Uh, the patient has you again, doctor, please always say that I'm going to see the patient, even if he's confused. You want to see him frequently. This is your job. So unfortunately, this point is not going to be scored for you. A risk management plan, you did not talk about the risk at all. So this point is not going to be scored for you. The psychological and social interventions, you mentioned the psychological interventions. Uh, it was organized, not formalic. Your attitude was good. Everything in your communication skill was good. However, in the management, 
I think he missed two or three important points. Okay, thank you so much, doctor. It was very good. Thank you. Thank you yes, who would like to go next? Can I? Can go ahead. Uh, Dr. Muhammad? Yeah, I'm Dr. Hassan uh, So what is your station, doctor? Uh, NMS, uh, Neuroleptic ah. Ligand Syndrome. Yes, yes, yes. Again, doctor, don't forget, always you will have in the scenario a sort of challenge to your communication skills. So this man is worried about his son. He came, uh, he brought his son as safe, uh, safe, but now he is in the ICU. He's very worried, show empathy and explain to him that this is something which no one uh, could have predicted and the patient needed this medication according to the guidelines, okay? But don't miss the communication issue in your, uh, uh, in your uh, discussion with him. Okay. Ready? Or you want to, one to two minutes to arrange your thoughts and write down your notes? Yeah, I, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Hello, Mr. Green. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm um, Dr. Sammy, one of psychiatrists working here. Yes. Okay, we are all mute. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, we will repeat the station. One, two, three. Okay. Um, uh, hello, Mr. Green. I'm Dr. Hello. Sammy, one of psychiatrists working here. Hello, Dr. Hi, uh, I understand that you have some concerns about uh, Francis, and well, I'm happy to uh, well, 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 explain I'm, to you. I've just been told by the nursing staff that she has been transferred to the intensive care unit. I don't know why, doctor. So she has been safe, and, 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 and uh, uh, she only she was talking about some voices, and but but physically she didn't have any problem. What's going on? Yeah, I understand. Uh, so I apologize for um, any distresses of upsetting you. Mm, I can see um, that uh, if yeah, of being a father, seeing your son in this condition is really hard. And uh, I, I just want to explain to you that what happened is uh, a very rare uh, but serious uh, unexpected side effect of medication called a uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Have you heard about it before? What is a neuroleptic malignant syndrome? Uh, it's a type of uh, side effect that occurs uh, uh, due to uh, using of uh, medications uh, and psychotic. Uh, it may be caused also due to um, uh, in dry, in dry hot weather, uh, uh, there is many uh, risk factors, but the main condition is due to side effect of uh, antipsychotic medication. Does it make sense to you? So you want to say that this this serious side effect developed because you gave him this medication. So why did you give him this medication, which causes this side effect? Okay, thank you for asking this important question. Uh, actually, what happened is, uh, as usual, uh, for uh, patients suffering from this condition, we restrict it to uh, national guidelines and giving uh, this type of medication. But what happened is uh, unexpected uh, side effect for these medications. Are you okay. following me? Yeah, so what is his condition now? What happens when he developed this side effect? Yeah, uh, what happens is uh, disturbed in brain chemical. Uh, this disturbance will cause his uh, muscle to be contract, which uh, elevate his blood pressure. Sorry, which <laughs> elevate his body temperature. So the body tries to uh, overcome this uh, increase in blood temperature by sweating. And also, he may affect his uh, conscious level and undisturbed uh, uh, heartbeat and 
blood pressure. Oh, well, doctor, so what, is it serious side effect? Is it, is it a serious side effect? Yeah, uh, and, uh, unfortunately, it's a serious side effect. But let me reassure you that it's rare. And he is uh, now taking and receiving the best care because uh, the, fortunately, the good thing is that we picked early the condition which is helping uh, later on in the outcome. Are you okay. following? Yeah, doctor. So, so what, what, what do you do exactly now for him in the, in the intensive care unit? Yeah, yeah, thank you for asking this question. Actually, uh, we transferred him immediately to the best, the best unit that he can receive uh, uh, best care. Uh, and we liaison with them, uh, giving him uh, medications that uh, keeps him calm and decreasing his body temperature. We also give him uh, IV fluids to regain the, uh, the imbalance of his body salts. We also give him uh, painkillers to be sure that he is not in pain. Uh, are you following me? Yes, yes, doctor. Yeah, we give also a, a, a medication that making him uh, sedating. And uh, in the beginning, before all of this, we stopped the offending uh, drugs that cause it this uh, condition do you so, want to ask her? so so when when he go when what would happen when he goes out of the of the of the intensive care unit yeah yeah um, when he uh, uh, discharged and get out from the intensive care unit we will be sure about uh, this condition not uh, be okay again so we will uh, make a note uh, about uh, uh, Francis that he has this condition. So any doctors who will come again will be cautioned about giving him medications that cause, uh, that not causing uh, this side effect again. Uh, we can use uh, another type of uh, medications like aripiprazole that will be helpful and no one to Less much causing this uh, side effect. Does it make sense to you? Yes, yeah. one minute. So, you think he he will get better? Uh, yeah, uh, hopefully. When uh, uh, many patients with this condition, is the uh, the outcome is uh, uh, we saw many patients get improved with this condition. Actually, it's about eight out of ten. Uh, get improved uh, well from this condition. Okay, doctor. So, uh, thank you. For, uh, do you want to ask about anything? Yes. Uh, how can I? Uh, if there's any chance that I can visit him? Um, unfortunately, at the moment, it's difficult. But let me reassure you. I, I will updating you uh, with his condition uh, as early as possible. And. You can visit him as, uh, when uh, uh, his condition gets improved. Okay, doctor. So, thank you, Mr. Green, for coming today. And um, I'm happy to leave you a leaflet that helping you to understand more about this condition. Thank you. Time, time. How do you feel about what you did? I don't know. Maybe due to the fluency? I don't know. No, actually, you did good, but I feel that you are so anxious. You know what to do, actually. Your knowledge is good, but your anxiety is so high. I felt that you were struggling with, with the station, though your, your answers were right in most of the questions. Uh, when we talk about the side effects, don't head duck. I'll just say, unfortunately, I have to be honest with you, there is a mortality rate, sometimes around uh, 15 to 20 percent. The patients cannot tolerate this side effect. However, 80 percent can uh, pass this side effect. Okay, you must say it clearly. Okay. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't want yes, to make him more yes. anxious. I said no, that. Yes, they, 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 no, they intentionally ask you this to see: Are you able to? 
I you now have this ego and stamina to say the bad news without any problem. So um, uh, you must be I honest. Know. You must be I, honest. I, I, I just I have to be honest with you. It is a serious side effects. We are doing our best, however, according to our knowledge, 80 to, to 80 to 85 percent of the patient get better. However, we, we know that around 15 to 20 percent of their body cannot tolerate this side effect and they might pass away. You must be ready with this, okay? okay. Um, when we said to you how, what will happen when he goes back, I expected from that we are going to stop the treatment, as we said, and wait for all the physical symptoms to resolve. And we are going to reinstate the medications gradually and follow him up thoroughly. And as you said, the documentation of this, uh, of this, uh, of, of the uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome in his fine. Again, doctor, when I said, is he going to get better? This is a physical problem. This is a physical problem. And we said that there are prognostic factors uh, and there are two prognostic factors which are very important in the physical issues, which are the treatment and the underlying medical problems. Okay, very important to say this. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, in, at, at the end, show empathy as you did and say that I'm going to update you and feel free to contact the show. This particular station carries a lot of empathy, a lot of empathy. I had it maybe once or twice and a lot of empathy from the beginning till the end. So you must uh, terminate the station with something which is so empathetic. I understand how much this can be difficult for you. I, I'll give you leaflets and also I'll give you my contact numbers so that if at any time you want to discuss anything, I'll be happy. And also I'll be updating you with the condition of Francis uh, as soon as it is okay. Let, let us see the feedback of our colleagues. I don't know, no, nobody's giving you feedback. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> I don't know, it's a good or bad. <laughs> okay, so nobody wants to give a feel. Why doctors? Why doctors? Okay, so nobody gave you any feedback. I don't know why. So let us see. Uh, he is good. So you have some fan here. By the way, the one, one of our colleagues, Dr. Nudrat, uh, he is not, is not able to do his station. And there is Dr. Victoria. Victoria, she said that she's going to uh, do the station. So I hope Dr. Victoria will try to read the station and uh, try to prepare it as, as much as she can. And thank, uh, thank her for uh, taking this uh, station and doing it. Well, what to answer when she asked about why she started him on the medication when he knew? Well, he said that this is according to the guideline, doctor. According, we treat the patients according to the guideline. And the story goes that this patient was agitated and they needed to calm him down and the de-escalation did not work and they had to give him the medications to calm him down. Okay. Let us see the slides. Okay, so. I want you to formulate rapidly, Doc. So what is the situation now, the level of risk and the background according to your information? Um, uh, Frances was uh, aggressive agitated patient. Uh, no, I don't want, why, why are you complicating things? The main psychological, just say what is the main psychological problem? Don't involve historical details like the symptoms, the name of the patient. All these are historical details. You want to know what is the main psychological problem now? What is the level of risk? And the background, the information which you know or you need to know in its biopsychosocial areas. Go ahead, yeah. please. Uh, condition with a neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Um, now he is in ICU receiving a medication uh, to well, decrease. Uh, this is management. This is the management. You can see, I really thank you now because though you, <laughs> you seem to be clever, but you are struggling with the formulation, which is the first time, point to be scored for you in the mark sheet, as we see, see, have seen in the mark sheet. Before mark sheet stop by the formulation. Is the candidate is able to formulate or no? So though you seem to be clever, but the formulation is not in your mind. It seems that's something new for you. 
So the uh, formation yeah. is simply you are just putting the foundation for your management plan. What is the psychological problem this man is having or this girl is having a neuroleptic malignant syndrome and there is high risk on her uh, because of her condition. There can be a risk of fatality. All this in the bio background that she has a psychological underlying psychological problem. She needs antipsychotic. She had good social support and also a physical condition is now uh, in, in need for a, in intensive care. This is how you uh, formulate, okay? Very yeah, important. Yeah, thank you. Okay, as you said, just two sentences which shows to the examiner that you are able in it to, yeah, behariz, to khallas al Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Okay, yeah. so in the beginning, I yeah. hope that also you could have just Ask him. So I would like to know more from you. Some information which will help us to, to understand more about the condition of Francis, and also to uh, help him in uh, the best way. And ask him about if there is any uh, past history of physical problems. If he is taking any drugs, any stresses, and any such any level of risk. Please, doctor. This is yes. This is a neuroleptic malignant syndrome. But as you can see, there is a particular point for the risk. So if you don't talk about the risk and show to the examiner that the risk is an issue in your mind, you're not going to score this point. Okay, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you must talk about the risk in by any means and show that you are keen to make sure that this patient is safe. Check the risk. This is why I this is a point for it by itself, checking the risk. And so after checking the risks, he explained the diagnosis which you did and the formulation, then setting the management plan. What are you going to do yourself? I hope that you should have said that I'm going to see him more fre frequently. I'm going to assess his mental state in the medical side and also do a risk assessment and also discuss with the physician about his physical condition. Where the patient is going to be treated currently is going to be treated in the medical side in the test of care unit, and once he is stable, he is going to go back to the psychiatric side. The investigations which uh, are important in his condition, namely the blood chemistry, because there is a particular enzyme which helps us to understand the uh, improvement or deterioration of the uh, condition, namely it is called creatinine phosphokinase, which you did not mention. Multidisciplinary team, here there is a role, big role for the physician. Uh, psychologically, you said what would happen, that he's going to go back and so on. And I wish that you would have mentioned that next time, if he's agitated, we're going to use benzodiazepines. Okay, next time, you always say this. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so psychologically, we're going to do benzodiazepine if he's agitated and antipsychotic with low propensity to develop uh, this type of uh, side effect. We're going to do some sort of family education. Any sort, and when he is goes, uh, goes out, he's going to be followed up by the nurse. This is to cover the social. Okay, whether he's going to get better or no, this is, these are the prognostic factors of the most common prognostic factors of all psychiatric disorder. We know that this patient is having a physical problem. So mainly the main prognostic factors for physical problems are the treatment and the physical condition of the patient. So if the patient is uh, having this treatment as soon as possible and is cooperative, this favors the good outcome. And if he does not have any underlying medical problems, also this uh, favors the good outcome, okay? I hope that yeah. you found it helpful. Yeah, yeah, that uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So who would like to go next? I can go Shall next. I? Okay, well, well, I don't know where. Well, I hope that you, you just write Dr. Mansi. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, just in the chat. Okay, so what is your station, doctor? Uh, this is substance abuse in pregnancy management. Yes. You are talking with the husband, aren't you? Yeah, yes. Okay, so this is an issue which is very controversial, and I have a lot of discussion and objections from the candidates, but this is my speciality. I'm specialized in the addiction now. Most of the candidates, I advise the patient according to the notes which they have 
that the patient take uh, heroin and they depend on the uh, therapeutic relation with the doctor until the end of the first month, which is totally BS. We know that the patients who are uh, heroin dependent or substance dependent, they lose control. And we never say to any patient who is taking heroin by injection, continue taking heroin by injection and just don't increase the dose. What we are going to do is that we are going to increase the dose of methadone to help her to stop heroin because we know that methadone is can be safe in pregnancy until it is 120 milligram. And if she wants to stop also methadone, she can be admitted in the hospital to gradually stop the methadone after the first trimester. But don't say that we are going to give her heroin in the first three months. And at the same time, you are going to talk about the side effects and the complications of heroin on the baby. So you are, say, you are saying two different things. If you say this, that I'm going to give her heroin and at the same time, uh, there is a possible high possibility of risk on the baby because of heroin. I know that this is what is written in the notes, but as I said before, the notes are not uh, reference. And the examiners are not committed to what is written in the notes. The notes are written by doctors. Very helpful indeed, but sometimes there are some mistakes. Never say that we're going to give to a pregnant woman heroin previous. This is not right. Okay. Don't forget the multidisciplinary team, which is the perinatal team, and that we are going to liaise with the physician here. Here, it is not the physician, but the gynecologist, and the, plan. the pregnancy is going to be planned all the way through, starting from the uh, pregnancy, the delivery, and even after the delivery. When he talks about the social services, you must talk that the, say that the social services are basically to help and to protect the children. Uh, they would do something uh, like a parental assessment to see if he and uh, his wife will be able to take care of the child. Okay? Yeah. Anyone has any question, write it down in the chat section, please. It is a very important station. It comes frequently. And unfortunately, the passing rate in this station is not high. Okay, so... Uh, we will uh, start. To, um, uh, are you ready or do you want to have one minute to write down your notes? And uh... Yeah, I can start. Okay. okay, one. Let's say that my name is um, uh, Chris. What's Chris? Chris. Let me mind. My name is Chris and my girlfriend or wife is Jennifer. One, two, three, go. Hello, Mr. Chris. I'm Dr. Wundi, psychiatrist in the mental health unit today. Hello. So how are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm fine, doctor, but I'm very worried about Jennifer. Um, I, yeah. I don't know what will happen uh, with the baby, what will happen with her substance misuse and social. So there are many issues which I'm worried about. Yeah, so Mr. Chris, I'm here to talk to you about them. So to my understanding, she's uh, currently pregnant and uh, she's on treatment with methadone. So I'm here to address your concerns, okay? Yeah, doctor, I want to know more about what will happen with her, how we're going to help her, and, 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 and the effect of the substance which she's taking on the pregnancy and what I'm going to do with the social services. I heard that they are going to take the baby. Yeah, so I would like to address all those, Mr. Chris. So before that, like, uh, can you tell me, like, uh, whether this is a planned pregnancy or not? Well, it is not planned because she didn't want to have a baby. But when we have, when we knew that she is pregnant, I said that I'm I'm okay with that. And you know, she is reluctant and hesitant. She is not happy with this idea because she had a baby who has been taken from her. But this is what happened. Okay, so from your side, you're okay with it. So how about uh, your relationship? Well, well my relationship with her is very good. Glad to know that she's having a good social support. So coming, coming to know, coming to your uh, query about the risk of uh, taking methadone and uh, other substances during pregnancy. So, uh, to my knowledge, she's taking methadone currently. Can it, Can you tell me like how much dose she's taking? Well, I don't know, but but she is taking methadone. I don't know how much. 
Yeah, by any chance, Mr. Chris, is she taking heroin too? Yeah, she is taking heroin maybe once in the weekend. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, the research says, Mr. Chris, that methadone is relatively safe during the pregnancy, but heroin has its own effect on the pregnancy, both on the mother, on the pregnancy, and also on the child. I see, though. I see. Okay, so, so shall I go ahead with the... Uh, yeah, so what, what, uh, well, what can happen to the baby because of the prey or the heroin? Yeah, so like uh, during pregnancy, if mother takes heroin, like the growth of the baby will be less, so like the birth weight will be less. And again, the premature delivery also can happen like before the date. And at times, the death of the baby also can happen within the womb of the mother before delivery. I see, I see them. I see. So, yeah. well, well, so how can we help her? Yeah, I didn't get that. How can we help? Yes, yes. Yeah, so, so like, uh, we are going to manage her in a multidisciplinary manner, and we are going to license her with the perinatal services, that is, psychiatrists will be involved, and also we are going to involve the obstetrician, and we are going to do it hand in hand. So, I would like to advise you that like she should be on regular antenatal checkup and also her pregnancy and also the delivery should be planned. Okay. And coming to the management of, are you there with me so far, Mr. Chris? What, what did you say? Are you there with me so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Chris, uh, coming to the management of uh, heroin intake during the pregnancy, so we are going to slowly taper the dose of heroin and uh, titrate it and try to increase the dose of the methadone. So, she will be managed on the methadone during the pregnancy. Yes. Yeah, so like, uh, of course, like uh, during the last three months of the pregnancy we need to again check with the methadone dose and if necessary we have to adjust the doses again i see doctor so did, did, is it safe for her to have a to do breastfeeding yes mr uh, chris like uh, when the dose of methadone is adjusted to lower side of like uh, 20 milligrams per day mother can safely breastfeed the baby I see. And, but like uh, there are other things like uh, the heroin and those things shouldn't be uh, taken during the pregnancy because the baby can develop uh, withdrawal syndrome. Withdrawal syndrome, yes. So are you aware of it, uh, Mr. Chris? No, no. So what happens is that like uh, when the mother is taking it, like uh, the baby will be exposed to the heroin in the pregnancy. So once the baby is out of the womb, then no heroin will be there for the baby. So like uh, she may land up in the side effects, like uh, the baby can be irritable or the baby can be jittery or like uh, the crying, the baby can be crying excessively and poor feeding. You can see these things in the baby once it is born. I see, I see. One, one minute remaining, one minute. So, doctor, so how can I help them? Yeah, from from my side, uh, from your side, like I do understand that uh, you're having a good relationship. So, like I would advise her to bring her to the regular antenatal checkup and also be on regular with the uh, drug and alcohol services so that they can adjust the doses of the methadone depending on the necessity and see that uh, she's abstinent from the heroin. I see. I see. And, so, do you feel do you feel that she might get better and she will be able to stop heroin? Yeah. So, like, I do understand your concern, but once the patient, once the person is addicted to heroin, it would be difficult. But we, as a multidisciplinary approach, I can uh, assure you that uh, we can uh, see that uh, she she will do well in the pregnancy. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Why did you say it will be difficult? Why did you just uh, blow up all what you did by saying it will be difficult? Well, well it, it is difficult to treat schizophrenia. It is difficult to treat bipolar. Why did you, did you say this? It is like any other psychiatric disorder. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for <laughs> blowing here. Don't uh, you ever say this again, please. Yeah, okay. I am here. I was asking you about the prognostic factors. We talked about the prognostic factors. Mm -hmm. The slide of prognostic factors, I have shown it several times. When I asked you, you see, it's going to get better. This is how we do the, uh, how, how we help each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let us see the feedback of our colleagues. Why they, they are giving you a lot of feedback. Okay, so they, they did not give a feedback for the last scan, but uh, well, blood-borne infections, yes. Uh, some empathy would have been better, yes. Uh, overdose, uh, formulation, she did miss the formulation. Um, well, she would have asked, should have asked about the pregnancy. In the beginning, yes, as I said, and try to have some uh, dialogue with him about the biopsychosocial areas of her life at risk. Abstinence, she talked about the neonatal absence syndrome. Okay. Uh, I will assess your wife and coming in the next. Yes, yes, very important to talk with her. Very, yes, Dr. Mahmoud, very excellent. I must talk with uh, the lady myself to explain to her the management because uh, eventually she is the patient, not the man. Uh, mm -hmm. Five, yes, infections. Okay, uh, well, ideally, this, uh, it's uh, the sad thing is that it is suitable for him to talk with the, uh, for her to talk with the man, no problem. Well done, good job, you have some fans here. Well, motivation to bring, yes, is she involved in the methadone program, she needs. Yeah, social part, very important. Yes, need to talk with the bears. Thank you so much, very important, very nice feedback. I hope that you have a look at the chat section, our colleagues give you a very good, show empathy, please. Whenever you, doctor, the best time to show empathy is when the role player starts talking, he will show to you that he is in a problem. Now in this state, I'm worried about my Jennifer, or how she's going to do what she's taking heroin, what is the effect of heroin on the baby? You know, I'm just showing through some emotions which you totally ignore. Never do this. The best yeah, yeah. time to show empathy is when the role player starts talking. Immediately, you should empathy because definitely you will start to show some emotions. Um, you did not ask me about other substances. Uh, you did, I think you didn't. I didn't hear from you, mother and baby, and baby unit. Uh, it would be difficult. Is a bomb by which you have <laughs> exploded your uh, station. Okay, so let's see the march in the our slide. As you can see, Dr. Here, this is simple uh, prognostic factors uh, slide. Uh, if she is having the treatment and cooperative, to this favors the good outcome. We know that the absence of psychiatric history and any childhood adversities or history of substance misuse uh, poses the good outcome. However, we know that if she is having substance misuse, then this is the area which we need to work on. Family history. Absence of family history and good family support also favor the good outcome. Before the illness, if she has good functioning and good coping with stressors and absence of any stressors, also this favors the good outcome. And the absence of physical illness favors the good outcome. These are the prognostic factors in all the psychiatric disorders. I hope that you do not miss this. Okay, yeah. I, I feel that you, whenever you are asked, uh, the candidates are asked about their, the, what is the patient's going, whether he, she, she is going to get better. They give you the, their own subjective evaluation, which you have just mentioned. It is difficult uh, for someone who's taking heroin. To it. Don't do this, okay? It is yeah. a question about the prognostic facts. So let's see. Please formulate, doctor. I hope that you formulate, and I hope that everyone also tries to formulate in a piece of paper now. What is the main psychological problem and what is the background which you need or you need to know about the patient? Yeah, so your wife uh, being pregnant currently, 
with uh, under the treatment with the methadone and currently taking heroin also yeah so with past the history of uh, heroin abuse she is she is now she is heroin dependent and she's on, yeah. also taking uh, methadone yeah. and this can risk on herself because of the heroin and also risk on the way all this in the background that we need to know more about her physical condition if there is any underlying social psychological condition also do social assessment social assessment for her ability to take care of the child okay so there is many issues here to be covered and as i say always the the background is not only the information which you know but also the information which you need to know because this formulation is the foundation of your the management plan so please mm -hmm. it is a skill which you will never master except when you uh, frequently try to apply so uh, introduction you introduce yourself in a very good way unfortunately you did not talk with the patient with the role player to gather information about the patient's condition if she has any physical problem if she has any psychological problem the level of support she's having any risk about and if she's taking any other substances this one minute dialogue is very important okay because as i said it includes assessment of the risk which is a, it's well is a distinguished point in the mark sheet and also show that you have a collaborative approach now the diagnosis is already established so all what you need to do is to do the formulation and then you talk about the management plan what are you going to do you must talk with jennifer yourself um, the man is not the patient. It's all about Jennifer. So you must talk with her, explain to her the management plan and address her concerns. Okay. And if you want to do risk assessment, there is no problem. And if you want to do motivational uh, interviewing in order to help her to uh, take steps forward and to stop her and also would be better. Where the patient is going to be treated, she can be treated at home definitely. And there will be a a perinatal team who will follow her up. Okay, you, you must talk about where she's going to be treated. Very important. The investigations is very important also because this lady might have blood-borne infections. You want to know the liver functions. You want to do urine drug screening. You want to do uh, kidney functions. Very important to do these investigations to know the baseline of her uh, physical condition. And now there is a multidisciplinary team physically, socially, which would cover all he needs, psychologically, physically, and socially. Physically, here we have the uh, gynecologist, which is very important to liaise with because everything will be planned in her uh, pregnancy, starting from the follow-up until she goes back home. And the delivery and the mother and baby unit, I didn't, didn't hear from you, the mother and baby unit. Uh, psychologically, you are going to assess her and also they will be in contact with substance yourself. It's very important. And also to adjust the dose of methadone and to discuss with her whether she wants to continue with the methadone or she wants to uh, do detoxification. And the best time to do the de detoxification is uh, after the first trimester. And then socially, you must talk about the social services. And the social services is very important in this condition because the role play, the role player will ask you if they are going to take the baby from. So you must talk about something called care assessment, parental assessment, okay? And the role of the social service is to make sure that the baby is safe. And you must also talk about substance use services. And the nurse, which was going to follow her up uh, as part of the multidisciplinary team. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. No, I did not finish. Let us see the mark sheet. Doctor. So you did not formulate, unfortunately. Um, you, you recognize significance of finding a result. Your management plan, uh, well, uh, it could have been better organized where she's going to be treated, lays with the gynecologist, uh, perinatal team. I didn't hear from you important things in the management plan. Uh, does not pay sufficient attention to the patient health you this will be scored for you because you said i'm going to talk with the patient myself does not develop adequate risk management plan i did not hear from you a single word about risk so definitely this point is not going to be scored for you 
psychological and social interventions, I think this can be scored for you because we talked about the social services and uh, that's and, and something is used team. It was not very organized. It was formalic. I felt that you, it was not for yeah, Well, I felt that you were not smooth uh, and it was not organized. Uh, otherwise, it was everything was good in your communication. Pay attention to this feedback and also to the feedback of your colleagues in the chat section. Thank you. Okay. No, this lady, Madam, no, the, the doctor, well, the hospital, if there is high risk, she's going to be treated in the hospital except when she's going, when she decides to do detoxification. Okay. Thank you so much. Who would like to go next? Uh, I can go next. Anas, Dr. Anas. Anas. Okay. Well, what is your uh, station, Dr. Uh, Mania. 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 Okay, let's see. Old, uh, this is the old man, the old farmer. Yes. So you are uh, talking to his son? His wife. Wife. Yes, all age many. Yeah. Okay, so I'm ready whenever you are ready. Uh, I, hello, uh, my name is Dr. Anas, one of the uh, doctors in mental health team, and I'm here to talk uh, with you about any concern regarding your husband. Sorry, uh, what is your name? You can call me uh, Mrs. White. Mrs. White and uh, your husband, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. White. Uh, White, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, first, can, can you tell me what do you know about uh, his Well, we, he, doctor, he has changed a, a lot in the past uh, three weeks. He is doing horrible things, totally out of his mind. He spent a lot of money, doctor, and and doing things which can be unsafe for him. That's why we brought him, brought him here. And actually the police is the one who brought him because he didn't want to come. Hello? Hello? Yes, sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, I didn't able to hear you. Okay, did you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, so, uh, when did you start to notice these changes? It started three months, uh, three weeks ago. We noticed that he is acting in a normal way, doing things which can be unsafe, and we brought him to you by the police. He didn't want to come. Oh, oh, yeah, I understand it, a difficult situation. So uh, this behavior affect, uh, how does it affect his uh, life and the social? What do you mean? Uh, how this behavior uh, affected? Uh, can you explain more about what, uh, what, what you mean by- Doctor, uh, he spent a lot behavior? of money. He spent a lot of money. He's going around with a car speeding and he did a couple of accidents. And we took oh. from him the keys of the car. Now he is moving around by the tractor in the streets. And eventually the police bought him here because he is doing oh. the things which are unsafe for him and the others. Yes, yeah, I understand that. So uh, uh, from uh, we already uh, talk with him and we assist his mental state and uh, we uh, find he has uh, something we called uh, mania. Did you hear about that? What is mania? Mania is uh, types of mood disorders. Uh, it's a short life illness. Uh, uh, people with mania uh, usually have uh, like this sort of high energy and irritability and this inhibited behavior that lead to a serious uh, disaster uh, consequence. Um, uh, actually, in, in the mania, uh, uh, with mania, sometimes uh, they feel uh, depressed depression and that uh, we called it bipolar bipolar uh, did uh, bipolar disorder did you hear about bipolar disorder no what do you mean by bipolar disorder 
Bipolar disorders means like two bulls. One is uh, mania and sometimes uh, uh, depression. Uh, the second bull is depression. Uh, so uh, we already uh, make uh, investigation for him, like uh, blood test and uh, drug screen and uh, and imaging, and the, uh, all uh, was normal. So that's we reach the diagnosis that he has a uh, bipolar disorder. Did, did you understand so far? Uh, yes, yes, doctor. So uh, I'm just wondering what can be the cause for this mania. Actually, there are uh, uh, no one know actually the causes, but uh, there are many factors play in uh, this, like uh, uh, stress for uh, stress, and that effect uh, uh, is uh, chemical uh, balance in his brain. Uh, make excess something we call the serotonin. Increase the serotonin makes him uh, more uh, energetic, more uh, 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 disinhibited behavior. Then after that, when serotonin, uh, this chemical substance decrease in brain lead uh, to uh, depression. So that's why he, uh, between attacks, sometimes mania and sometimes depression. I see, doctor. So, what, what, how can we help him, bro? Uh, actually, you know, uh, uh, your your support to him uh, in this difficult times uh, is so important. Uh, especially, uh, we will uh, going to admit him. Uh, maybe he will going to refuse this admission, but unfortunately, even if he refuse, we will go uh, under mental health act as it uh, it's important for him uh, for admission. Uh, and after admission, we can proceed to uh, give him uh, suitable uh, treatment and uh, uh, support. Uh, for, so from you, uh, uh, from your perspective, uh, during this time to support him inside the uh, hospital and later on, uh, we will, uh, you'll have uh, like family therapy that will help you, uh, uh, will help you to uh, know more about the, uh, the, uh, the problem. One minute remaining, one minute remaining. Okay, so uh, but, thank but you. So he, he is not going to take the medications, though. And, and and I know that he will not be cooperative, and he might get agitated. Yeah, that, that's why I, I am just telling you, if uh, he refused, we are going to uh, 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 admission head under Mental Health Act. Uh, and to recap, what we will talk about is that your husband has a bipolar disorder and he don't have any uh, medical cause and it was it, it, it is first attack for him. Uh, he don't use any uh, substance uh, and uh, and we're going to uh, admit him to, to give a suitable medication that uh, we call uh, antipsychotic uh, medication. Uh, and time, 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 uh, time, time, time. How do you feel about what you did? Uh, it's in, it's first time for me to uh, any practice. So uh, I thought I, uh, before that I would thought it easy when I watching, but in, uh, in you know in the actual yeah, time it's yeah. so difficult. With time, with time, you you will improve your 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 uh, your performance. But you must know where are your mistakes. I hope that our colleagues give us your feedback. The feedback, okay. So. All in all, I really appreciate that you are trying your best and you have the audacity to start uh, and, 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 and take the, the initiation to do the station in front of all the cameras. This is a very good thing. But pay attention that your language needs to be improved. And this is not a difficult issue. Just be ready with the sentences, write sentences, write them in the notes and make sure that they are grammatically accurate in order to be, to be more presentable, because there is a particular point for the language. This might not be uh, very fair that there is a point for the language, but this is how they accept the candidates. And I will show you the point about the language in the worksheet. Okay. Um, 
this behavior, uh, well, I don't know. You said that you sh it is a short living in illness. It is not very accurate to say this. Um, it is bipolar disorder. Your bipolar disorder explanation should be uh, better. Um, this is also your homework. Everyone should write down in the notes the explanation for every uh, every possible uh, disorder which he needs to explain in the uh, task. And it should be as simple as possible without any jargon and it should be fluent. Uh, no one knows the cause. This is not the best way to answer the question, what can be the reason? And say that there is no particular cause, but don't say that no one knows the cause. There is no particular cause, and there, but there are many factors which help or cope might be underlying this uh, disorder, okay? Like some misuse, chemical imbalance, from history, post psychiatric history, etc. And there can be also some underlying medical problems in the elderly, or and even dementia can be presented in the beginning with some sort of mood disorder, okay? Uh, you sometimes use jargon like the word serotonin. Uh, and I ask you, how can we help him? I thought that you are going to start talking about the management. It was a bit disorganized. Um, I didn't hear from you once mood stabilizers. Once. You did not say it. Though it is the backbone of the treatment. Yes. yes. The antipsychotics are used as mood stabilizers. So the backbone is the mood stabilizers. They can be uh, pure mood stabilizers like lithium or, or sodium valproate or they can be in the form of antipsychotic, which can be used at most of us. Um, we said that the patient does not have any under medical, like medical cause, which is not accurate. You don't know. And he does not use any drugs. You did not, uh, it is not accurate. You don't know. You, you, you didn't ask her and you did not do any investigations to exclude these issues. Okay, let us see the feedback of our colleagues. Well, so welcome. Uh, uh, actually, it was mentioned in uh, the case that uh, he already made investigation and uh, uh, was all uh, normal and the drug is really normal. That's, yeah, uh, could I use this in a note or I have to? Well, I really appreciate the feedback, but we don't love our, our, the performance of our colleagues. So it is not uh, right or accurate. If someone wants to give a good feedback, thank him. We all appreciate this. If someone wants to make fun of our, of his colleague, this is totally unacceptable. Okay, we all here do mistakes in order to help each other. If someone feels that he is so good and he's making fun of his colleagues, he doesn't have a place among us. Thank you so much. Let us see, according to our slides, what he, Dr. Anas did. So uh, can you formulate, please, for me, doctor? Uh, yeah, I, I have tried to formulate as uh, your husband has uh, bipolar disorder, and uh, this was first attack for him with no past history of any attack like that, and uh, he don't use any substance, and then uh, he don't have any uh, general uh, medical condition. And what is the level of risk? Oh, yes. And he has a uh, risk from uh, uh, impulsive behavior uh, that uh, would lead to uh, disaster consequence. Okay, so just make sure that you are seeing things which is related to the sequence of what you did in the car, in the station. So before saying that you, you, you he doesn't have any underlying medical problems, you must make sure that you either did some sort of investigations or you ask her about this, or you need to know. So in this case, we don't know the case of this man. So and instead of saying that he doesn't have any underlying medical problems, you can say that we need to know more about his underlying medical problems, because there's a possibility that he might have an underlying medical problems, okay? And did, did you say, do you understand what I'm saying? We need to know yes, more about yes. the possibility that he might be using drugs, Okay, all this on the background that he, he doesn't have any past history of psychiatric disorder and he has a good psychological social support. So the main psychological problem now that he is having his first episodes of mania and it carries higher risk on himself and others. And this is very important because this will be the foundation of your 
uh, admission because this is why you are going to admit him. All this in the background that we need to know more about his physical condition because also this will be reflected on your, uh, uh, on your management plan that you need to do more investigations and assess him physically. And also the social, that's a very important to say that this point which you, you jump to a conclusion in the physical issue. Okay, uh, Dr. Ennis, in the yeah, beginning, try to gather. Thank you, that's... Yeah, just so I didn't finish. In the beginning, gather the relevant information, say that you want to know more about his physical. Some just signpost with a sentence which will show that to the examiner that you are starting to gather information. I would like to say something that I would like to know more about the condition of uh, Mr. White in order to take the right clinical decision. Uh, does he have any underlying medical problems? Is he using any street drugs? Is it the first time for him to be in contact with psychotic services? Any stresses around him? Uh, do you have any thoughts of, or any concerns about his safety? Okay, these are the first questions which you gather with them, relevant information. We, it is very important for two things, to show that you have the collaborative approach, you are not lecturing, and the information which you are get, going to gather now will help you to do your formulation, okay? And pay attention again to the diagnosis. When you explain the diagnosis, it is your homework and every candidate's homework that he writes down the explanation of every diagnosis in simple words, which will help you to explain it in a fluent way, okay? Now, when you set the management plan, I always, this is my way, if you have your own way, no problem, but make sure that you talk with the patient. You say, no, he is a manic patient. They expect from you to say this. They want you, you to show that you are a patient who, you are a doctor who is keen to help the patient to understand his condition and the management plan. Okay, you are not an orthopedic person. Where the patient is going to be treated? Did you talk about the hospital admission? Yeah, yes, yeah, okay. and uh, admission under mental health act. Okay, the investigations uh, are very important in this condition. He is an elderly man. You are going to give him medications, and uh, you need to know more about his uh, heart tracing, liver functions, kidney functions, blood chemistry, and during drug screening, all these are very important. The multidisciplinary team is very important here physically. According to investigations, you might need the support of the physician, and you're going to give him benzodiazepines to calm him down. You're going to give him mood stabilizers. Um, basically, it can be sodium valproate or it can be uh, olanzapine. You just choose one of them and say to her that you're going to give her leaflets about it. Okay. And uh, socially, I think it serves mysterious team according to the assessment and also psychoeducation to the family. Just always say something in the social area to make sure that the point uh, of the social uh, uh, management in the mark sheet is going to be scored for you. Let us see rapidly the mark sheet, Dr. Anas, to know how you are going to be scored in the mark in the station. In, in this. So you must formulate, it is a skill, you, you, you recognize the findings. The, the management plan, unfortunately, did not talk about the risk or the mood stabilizers, so this is not going to be scored for you. Uh, you did not say that I'm going to talk with the patient, so this is not going to be scored for you, point number four. Adequate risk management plan, you said that the patient is going to be admitted. That is not identify appropriate psychological social interventions. Again, you talked about you didn't talk about the mood stabilizers and you didn't talk about family psychoeducation so, and, and, you know, and uh, being followed in the uh, outside by a team, the crisis team. So unfortunately, this is not going to be scored for you. Now, regarding the language, Doctor, as you can see, the last two points, they can be a sort of bias to the uh, native English or those who are talking um, the language in a professionally. But this can be surpassed by having your own notes and trying to write down the sentences which you are going to use in the stations. And with time, you'll find that these sentences are repeated. You don't need to write sentences for every station, okay? 
So it is very important for you, Dr. Anas, to do this in order to make sure that these two points are not going to be missed from your school. Thank you so much, doctor. You are very clever. Okay, but thank you need to work, you. okay? Thank you so much. Inshallah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, who would like to go next? Okay, I would like to go next. Doctor. Okay, who is Dr. Victoria? Yeah, Dr. Victoria. Hi, Doctor. Thank you that you take, took the initiative and you took the station. So, what is your station, Dr. Postnatal illness. Postnatal illness. Okay, so, okay, so I, I'll just have a look at it because there are many postnatal uh, stations. Okay, give me just one minute to read this. Okay. 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 So, so this lady has a baby and she did have it. Okay, I'm ready whenever you're ready, Bob. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, you are going to talk with uh, the wife. Let's say that my name is um, Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith. And okay. uh, the lady's name is uh, Mrs. Uh, her name is Rachel. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three, go. Hi, Mr. Smith. Hello, Dr. My name is Dr. Victoria, and I'm one of the doctors from the Mental Health Unit. I understand that you would like to talk to me about your wife, Rachel. Well, doctor, I don't know what's going on with her. She has changed a lot. She is sad most of the time. And, and they said that you are going to see her, and they asked me to talk with you. Mm, yes, um, we. I would assess some. Um, Ms. Rachel, after speaking with you, but just to get further history, um, what exactly have you noticed about her? Well, she she is tearful most of the time, doctor, and mm. she she is talking about things which are not that, that her baby is having a serious illness, and mm. I think that she needs to take care more of the child. I feel that he is crying too much, and she doesn't show the, you know the effect or the care, affect and the care for the child he cries. Yeah, well, I'm worried, doctor. Yeah, it appears to me that it's been a difficult time for you and um, Miss Rachel also. Um, but just to ask, has there been anything stressful going on for Miss Rachel at this point in time? No, actually, we don't have any stress. Actually, a very supportive family around her. Okay, and um, um, I understand that she's ten weeks pregnant, also. Yes. Yeah, was this pregnancy planned, was it? Yes, yes, it is planned and we are we, we were very happy about it. Hmm. Okay, and um, some of the things I, I can also, I noticed from Miss Rachel's notice that um, she has been having some poor appetite. Has she been getting any food at all? Well, I, well, she didn't, well, I think she should eat better, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, she is not complaining and I don't feel that she lost weight, but I feel that she should eat better, yeah. Okay. And has uh, she ever mentioned I'm um, wanting to harm the baby or herself? No, but I feel that she is not taking care of him, doctor, in the, in the best way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
as um as some um, has she ever suffered from a depressive thing like this before since you've known her no 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 hmm. okay um thank you for all that for being open to me mr smith um from what we know and um what you some of the things you've mentioned it appears that um miss rachel has what we call um um postpartum depression have you heard about it before no what is this postpartum depression so um it's a kind of a mental disorder that will cause um in women following delivery of babies and sometimes affects their mood and um sometimes could even go as um severe as them wanting to harm themselves or their baby so what, what can be the cause for this doc um because largely um the cause is not well known but we do know that um some chemical imbalance and sometimes some stressful life conditions around them at that point in time could put them at the risk of having a postpartum depression. I see, yes. I see. Look. So, um, well, I just want to know, so how can she get help from what she is suffering from? Yes, um, just to recap all that we have said, um, Miss, what we do know is that um, Miss Rachel has what we call postnatal um, depression, and um, currently she is at high risk to herself and um, to the baby because she's not eating well and um, she's quite high, she's high risk. And um, even um, this um, stressful life condition currently and the background um, issue that she's currently pregnant, so all of this adds add so much stress to her. Um, but should I go on on how to, we would um, support her and manage her? Is it okay to go on? Yes, yes, okay. Yes, in managing her, we will take a multidisciplinary team approach involving the nurses on the ward, the obstetricians, and even so the so social... You want, you want, are you going to admit her? Yes, um, we would, we would, we would... Why, doctor, why are you going to admit her and who is going to take care of the baby? Yes, yeah. so um, I understand that you're quite concerned about how our care will be, but would admit her because she's of high risk, we will admit her into the mother and baby unit to be sure that um, to make sure that um, bonding takes place between her and the seven month old baby which she currently has, and so that she'll be monitored properly on the ward. I see, I see, doctor. So, well, what type of help she's going to get in the ward, doctor? Well, um, there, there are lots of we have um, to help support will give her about medications and non medications also some thought therapy, but prior to starting our medications we would like to um, see Miss Rachel further assess her and um, also tell her what our treatment plan would be like, we would also like to check to be sure that she doesn't have any physical health problems by doing some tests for her. That is, I see. I see yes. That. So, so is, she, is she going to get any other help, doctor? Yes, um, we would most likely start her on an antidepressant to help with her mood. And then um, if um, when she gets more stable and um, it's better, we'll start her on a thug therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy. One Have minute remaining, one minute remaining. Have you heard about it before? No, no, what is this type of thug therapy? Yeah just to help her um, change the way she think about things currently to which will affect the way she feel and thereafter affects the way she behaves and also to be able to cope with the stress all of the stress happening around her at this point yeah um would you like me to tell you about some of the social support we have for her yes 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 sure yeah so um we would um part of the things we would do is that um to be good to link her up with some support groups following discharge from the hospital and even um also um getting the some health visitors to come regularly to visit her and just help her through this hard period um just to add that it will be good for you to also support her she needs all the support she can get now from you okay but do you feel that she might get better Yes, um, with what we know, um, people do get better. She has, um, come, knowing that she has come in the right time and um, good support from her family and friends, we would get better. Okay. Yes. 
Thank you so I know much. I've said it. Time, time, time. Dear. You are good. Have you ever been to the class before? Yes, I have. Except very them, good. But... You are very clever. So let us see what doctor did. So I expect just one thing. When you talk about the medications, she needs antidepressants and antipsychotics because this lady have some sort of psychosis. She believes that her child is having leukemia. Okay. And you have some fans here. Someone is saying uh, very good. Yeah, very good. All of them are, well, uh, what can I say? Yeah, well, okay. You, you, are good, you do come uh, and do your own session. They are all raising your performance. So uh, let us have a very uh, rapid look at our slides. Okay, so let us see. Well, very clever, Doctor. The, your introduction and empathy was very good. You gathered very relevant information. Because this will help you to set a uh, formulation, also by physical, psychological, and social. And did she talk, you talk, and he talked about the risk. Very important to do this because this will help you to score points in the communication skills and in the management uh, uh, task points. Uh, you explained the diagnosis and you did, you did set the formulation, but when you said set the management plan, please say that you are going to talk with the patient. They like this. They like the doctors who are going to who talk with their patients to explain the management plan and to address their concerns. You don't just uh, deal with the patient as if it is a something which does not uh, which is not involved in your management plan. So you must say that you are going to talk with them to explain the management plan address her concerns, you might do some sort, again, risk assessment to help her in the best way. Where she's going to be treated, you talked about this. Did you talk about the investigations? Yes, I did. Okay, the multidisciplinary team here, there's a place for the gynecologist because this lady is uh, pregnant. Did you talk about this? Yeah, I, I said obstetricians. Yes, obstetrician and her pregnancy is going to be planned and supervised by the perinatal team and everything is going to be planned from here on, even the delivery. <coughs> the period after the delivery, she might need to stay in the mother and baby unit. Psychologically, this lady, as I said, needs to be admitted and she's going to take antipsychotics and antidepressants. And if there is a need for uh, uh, something to calm her down, the best thing is to give her something like benzodiazepines and the choice of medications definitely is going to be suitable for her uh, nursing of the child and her communication with the child is going to be supervised. Are you with me, doctor? Yes, sir. Okay, so then socially you must talk about that when she goes home, she's going to be followed up by the nurse and the perinatal team. So this is the only thing which you should remember. That's why whenever I'm, I, I talk about women, the, the the management, I say the multidisciplinary team who will follow her up physically, psychologically, and socially, because this will help me to remember that there is a social part in the management which should be done. But anyway, it was a very good performance. I really liked it. Thank you so much. Let's see the mark sheet. Okay, so you formulated, uh, you identified the find, recognized significance finding and result. Your management plan was good. Uh, well, I have to be honest with you. So you did not mention the antipsychotics. So yeah. this point, though you mentioned the admission and the antidepressants, so this can be left for a subjective evaluation of the examiner, whether he will leave it or he will score it for you, I don't know. You pray, well, again, patient has you. You didn't say that I'm going to talk with her and address her concerns. As I say, uh, this is not a sentence to be said in order to appear as if you are a cool doctor. No, it is said for, to score a point in the mark sheet. I'm going to talk with the patient myself and say anything, what I'm going to, I'm going to just discuss addresses, concern, her concerns, discuss the management plan. Just say that you are going to talk with the patient to score this point for you. Okay, please, doctors, don't forget this. Risk management plan you did, 
psychological and social. Again, doctor, you did not talk about social. How she's going to be managed after the works when she goes back home? Again, this is a point to be left by for the examiners. So, though I personally I like what you did, but uh, as you can see, uh, well, you might lose two to three points from your management plan because it is not about our subjective evaluation. Make this mark sheet your reference while you are doing this station. It was very organized, not formatic. Everything in the communication school was good. Thank you so much. You are very clever. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, who would like to go next? Myself, uh, doctor. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zaid. How are you? I'm slant. I'm fine, sir. How are you doing? Okay, so what is your station? Uh, it is sodium valproate and pregnancy. Okay, this is a very important station, sodium valproate and pregnancy. Okay, so let us see. So this is the lady who comes to you while she's taking sodium valproate and she is uh, she discovers that she's pregnant. Exactly, sir. Okay, so give me just one minute. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, so we can start. I just uh, uh, give me one minute to have a look at it, refresh my memory. Yeah, she's seven weeks pregnant. Don't forget about the enhanced follow-up by the ultrasound to know the development of the baby, okay? So let us uh, continue. One, two, three. Let's say that my name is uh, Rachel. One, two, three, go. Hello, Ms. Rachel. I'm Dr. Ahmed, one of the doctor from Mental Health Team. Hello, doctor. I gathered from the notes that you have been referred by your GP to me and you have some concerns. Can you please share your concerns to me? Well, well the problem is that doctor, um, I'm taking something called sodium valproate and I remember when I started taking it that I should plan any pregnancy, but this was about three years ago, I forgot. And I've discovered that I am now seven weeks pregnant and I don't know what to do. Okay, so you are on sodium valproate, and currently you found that am I the only one who's not able to? Here, Dr. Zaid? No, um, I also yeah. weren't here. Well, I think we lost him. So we will wait until he comes back. If anyone has any question, please write it down in the uh, chat section. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, we have lost you. So we need to start again, please. One, two, three, go. Hello, Ms. Rachel. I'm uh, Dr. Ahmed from one of the doctors from Mental Health Team. Hello, uh, I gathered. Hello. I gathered from the notes that you have been referred by your general practitioner as you have some concerns. Can you please share them? Well, uh, the problem is that I have discovered that I'm pregnant. Now I guess it is seven weeks. And the problem with that, uh, I've been told that you should not take uh, sodium valproate while you are pregnant. Uh, that's why the GP has referred me to you. Okay, 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 Mr. Rachel. So uh, is your pregnancy has been confirmed? Yes, I did the pregnancy uh, test several times, yes. Okay, and how do you feel about the pregnancy? Well, I'm okay with it, but I'm very worried, doctor, because I've been told that the sodium valproate is not good for the babies, and I want to know what can happen for the baby. 
if I'm taking something for free. I, I, I understand your concern. I congratulate you on you being pregnant and coming to your, uh, your query regarding the effect of the sodium valproate on the pregnancy. What is what do you know? Like, what is your knowledge, or what is what is the information you have regarding sodium valproate? Well, they gave me some leaflet years ago, but no, I, I don't remember what has been written there. This uh, many things which are not good for the baby. That's all what I remember. Uh, I understand, and that that is a very very important question, the effect on the baby. But before I coming to this important question, I have a few things to ask to understand the background. Can you please tell me like why this sodium valproate hasn't started for you? Why? Well, I, I've been diagnosed with bipolar mood disorder about five years ago, and I've been given several medications, and this is the only medication which okay. helped me. Okay, and, uh, uh, and can you tell me like in the last five years, like how many, uh, uh, like, how many number of times you fall ill because of this bipolar illness? Well, I've been admitted maybe twice in the past five years, but three years ago, after taking sodium valproate, uh, I have not been admitted. It helped me quite a lot, though. So, I, I understand that. And in, during the last two admissions, <coughs> were, were they sectioned admissions under the mental health act? Yes, yes. I did horrible things, doctor. I spent a lot of money and I've been involved in bad things. I, 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 it was horrible, actually. It was a tough time at that time. And uh, can you just tell me, like, uh, since you are on sodium valproate, uh, how you're doing? Well, I'm doing fine. As I said, it's the only medication which helped me. I, I tried several medications, but they were not as good as uh, sodium valproate. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, can you please tell me, like, since you're on sodium valproate, uh, are you on regular getting your uh, regular investigation done for the sodium valproate, like liver function test? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And is, is it your first pregnancy? Yes. Okay. And anyone in the family has a similar illness? No, no. Okay. Are you taking any any substance in the form of alcohol, cannabis, or some, no, some other no, things? No, no, no. Okay. Thanks for the information, Mr. Richard. Now, coming to the important questions, uh, uh, you have asked, sodium valproate is uh, one of the medication which is used for bipolar disorder as well as for fits. The effect on the sodium valproate uh, on the baby can be understood in, in two ways. One, it has an effect on the physical development of the baby. And the other, it has a development, uh, the, what we called uh, the cognitive development of the baby. This means the mental development of the baby. The physical, are you there with me, Mr. Chu? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you can always interrupt me if there is anything uh, you appreciate that need to be clarified. The physical defects can be in the form of the child has abnormalities in the development of bones, muscles, or uh, the urinary system, or some serious side effects in the form of development of the spinal cord, in which case uh, the baby who can bond might develop disabilities, as well as paralysis. What? Am I clear to you? Yes. Yeah, and some of the, the defects, which, which can, uh, in the form of uh, movement, in the form of, uh, mental, in the form of cognitive development or brain development, can happen in the form of uh, effect on the development of the milestones. Like uh, maybe the child can, uh, starts uh, walking, talking uh, late than usual, or or the child IQ can be less in compared to the other child, as well as the child have a possibility of some serious uh, uh, mental illnesses like autism spectrum disorder. This is one of the type of uh, uh, neurodevelopment disorder. Uh, are you there with me? Yes, yes. So these are the two uh, broad way uh, I can uh, define that uh, the child can be affected if the person continued on sodium valproate. Well, well, it sounds to be serious. I don't want to take this medication. I, I want to stop it. 
Oh, uh, I appreciate that you are quite distressed because yes, the side effects are, are very serious. But as your illness has been well controlled by this particular medication and there are possibility of- relapse. One minute remaining. So it is important. There are a number of options where, uh, where the, where the uh, treatment can be planned. Stopping medication immediately resulted in poor response to your, as well as the development of the baby. So I won't suggest the stopping the medication immediately. Oh. Not, not be unsafe, doctor. Uh, the baby is not going to be safe. Uh, can you please repeat? The baby is not going to be safe. The baby, the baby has a risk. The baby has a risk of development of some, uh, some uh, uh, of the side effects as told you. So that can happen uh, once the she uh, you continue you uh, 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 because of the ongoing valproate. Is there any other query? Yes. Yes. So, well, how can we sort this out? There are a number of options with that in the context when you have a bipolar affective disorder currently pregnant and on sodium valproate and, uh, and you have a supportive uh, uh, family with, with your partner. So I suggest there are, there are a number of ways where this thing can be managed. Number one, the, the sodium valproate can be slowly titrated. Time, 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 time. How do you feel about what you did? Oh, I... I started well, but later on, uh, uh, I could not able to uh, move smoothly with the information it's with me. And okay. in the last, the questions I'm not able to answer in a very straightforward, uh, in less words mean? and more clarity. Okay, so um, I hope that the colleagues give us their feedback in the chat section. So the first thing which you should pay attention to, Doctor, so when I said to you that, um, I, I wanted to know more about the side effects. You did not address my concern. The uh, task here is management and address the, the concerns. I know that you have your own agenda and you have your own stepwise approach in the management plan, but how can you sort this situation out? So I'm talking to you about, and I want you up to know about a particular thing. And at the same time, you have your own stepwise approach. So the most important thing is to address my concerns tell me what are the side effects of the sodium valproate and then ask me the questions which you want to know starting from gathering the relevant information do you understand what i'm saying because i started talking about i want to ask about i want to know more about the possible side effects of the sodium valproate but instead of addressing this question you went with your own agenda and this is sufficient to give you a feedback that you have your own agenda and you are not paying attention to my questions. Um, I, uh, I thought of the same approach, but before like coming to the conclusion where I need to like, discuss the different aspects, I need to have some information regarding the background. Is it so? Yes, but and you spent a lot of time in this area, just a few questions. Okay, address the concerns that you said, excessive time in the history taking. Uh, sodium valproate side effects, please try to make this uh, in a more simple way. So you can say that we have around 10% of the patients who take this sodium valproate. Their babies develop problems in the uh, urine formation and the urine tract parts of the babies. So uh, and this can cause problem in the kidney and the urethra. Does this make sense of, uh, to you? 1% have problems in the development in the spine, and this causes a problem called spina bifida, which I didn't hear from you. And they also have problems in the development in the, of the bones of the skull, and also can have problems in the development in the uh, fingers as well. On the long run, uh, we notice that around 30% have a problem in the developmental milestones after delivery. This means that their uh, IQ and their ability to perform in the school and the time they start walking and talking can be later than the other uh, children. Does this make yeah. sense for you? This is how you talk about side effects. Um, I didn't know that taking uh, sodium valproate 
is a predisposing factor for autistic disorder. Maybe this is a new information, I don't know it. I hope that this is the right information because if it is not the right information, this is a mistake. Uh, hand movement, some pay attention that your hand movement, as you can see, this is a very simple hand movement, which I'm doing now, but because it is in the screen, it appears as if it is a very much exaggerated hand movement. Pay attention to this. You might feel that I'm not moving my hand much, but the problem is this, this is the problem with the online, uh, online in, interview. It makes any facial or expression or hand movement much, much exaggerated. Um, well, when I ask you if I don't want to be to take sodium valproate, you must say to her that the risk on the baby and on herself is much higher because it stops the medications. This means that she might relapse. We know that the relapse it can be up to 80% uh, in the patients who have history of uh, mood disorder if they are pregnant and they are not taking the medications. Very important to say this. That's why we continue taking the medications. Okay, doctor. Um, I think you did not cover much of this. Let us see the feedback of our colleagues and pay attention did not complete the task and spent a lot of time with the background information. Yes, ultrasound, yes. Great work, distractions, well. Does, uh, yes, those uh, monitoring frequently, yeah. Tamer one and major side effect development of the baby a little. Okay. Lays with the perinatal psychiatric services. Very good, yes, doctor. Okay, doctor, so let us see the mark in the uh, slide. Uh, okay, so uh, please formulate rapidly, doctor. According to the information which you know about this patient, uh, this is very important, formulate please. <laughs> formulate, doctor uh, Zaid. Uh, Ms. Richard, uh, uh, currently presented with on sodium valproate, currently pregnant, presented in the background of bipolar affective disorder, and currently no specific risk has been found. Yes, but there is high risk on the baby from the sodium valproate, and also high risk on her uh, because she is liable for relapse. Okay, very important to say this. This is the risk which is in the patient. Okay, very important. Okay, gathering your information. So the problem here is that you have been, uh, you know, distracted by my question, and in, in and, and in, instead of addressing my concerns and trying to go back to your management plan, you totally ignored my uh, concerns and you went with your stepwise approach, which we are trying to understand here. And this is not a good thing. Just answer my question, and then say to her something like, I would like to know more information in order to help you in the best way or to take the right clinical decision and take the information in just few questions about any underlying physical condition, an open-ended question about her past psychiatric history, any social support and, the, uh, and how does she feel about the pregnancy and the level of risk associated with this type of mood disorder. Check the risk is very important, doctor, which I feel that you didn't do. Okay, okay, the management plan. What are you going to do yourself? I'm going to check you, and, and as you said, to have frequent appointment with you and to address any, all, all your concerns in this appointment. Very important to do this. As I said, there's a particular point for those who talk with the patient. That's why there is a point here regarding talking with the patient. Where she's going to be treated, she's going to be treated at home. Um, and followed up by the perinatal team. And also uh, she's going to stay in the mother and baby unit after uh, the delivery. It's very important to talk about the investigations, particularly the level of sodium valproate. You want to make sure that the level of sodium valproate is as low as possible. Now the multidisciplinary team is very important, it's mainly the perinatal team. You are going to lay with the obstetrician Everything in her pregnancy is going to be followed up. 
and there will be follow-up for, by the uh, ultrasound enhanced follow-up to make sure that the development of the baby is okay. And regarding the medications, okay, she can take sodium valproate with the least possible therapeutic dose and under the umbrella of uh, the uh, under the umbrella of uh, folic acid. Are you with me, doctor? <clears throat> and if she wants to change it, and if she wants to change it, you can give her olanzapine, and later on she can decrease it gradually. But this will not carry the same uh, outcome as the uh, sodium valproate. Uh, and as for the, uh, on, we said that the biopsychosocial, the social here is the perinatal team. She's going to be followed up after the delivery by a psychiatric nurse because this period is also a period in which the uh, development of psychiatric disorders is very common in the child, in, in the females who have a history of uh, mood disorder. Are you with me, doctor? Everything is okay. Do you have any questions? Anyone has any question related to what I've said or a feedback? And please write it down in the chat section. Okay. Okay, so do you see this mark sheet? Okay, do you see it, doctor? Anyone, I don't, the doctor, we lost him. Again, I hope that everyone is seeing this church mark sheet. I lost everyone. Are you with me, everyone? Yes, yes, doctor, we're with you. Okay, so he, I think he did not formulate properly. Um, he did say, uh, recognize significance findings and result. Unfortunately, the management plan, he did not find, have a time to it. Uh, patient health review, again, he did not talk with the patient. Uh, risk management plan, I think he he did not talk about the risk, unfortunately. The psychological and social intervention, again, he did not talk about them. As you can see, a lot of points in the, in the management might not be scored for him. It was not very organized, otherwise everything was good in the communication as far as I am concerned. No, but poor listening skills because he did not address my uh, question. I asked him about the side effects. And instead of addressing the question, he answered uh, something else. So don't get anyone, that, I hope that he does not get frustrated from this feedback. The management task is a very difficult, the most difficult task actually, and the, uh, and, and the pulsing rate is not that high. So don't get frustrated from this feedback. It's just to help everyone to be better in this performance. And here we can do all the mistakes no problem. The most important thing is to improve our level and to go to the examination without any mistakes. Do all what you want to do here, no problem. But don't do the mistakes in the task. Okay, um, I hope that this helped everyone. It was a privilege to be with you. Just let's see the feedback. Does she have to be admitted? Yes, definitely, doctor. She's going to be admitted the mother and baby unit. What recommendations do we give? What do you mean by, by what recommendations do we give? I don't understand. Should we say it is recommended that we use solid and bread because of high risk of baby? Yes, yes, we do this, Dr. Rizwan. Are they the parents with you? Okay, thank you so much, doctors. It was a privilege. I hope to see all your names on the mark sheet. Have a good night. Please, please, doctors. This is, it, it doesn't stop here. You must have your own study partners to practice these stations with them. The exam is very close. It's not like what you think is in Jan. We are here now in November. No, it is very close. I think you should start working hard from now. Thank you so much, doctors. Have a good night.